This time on Finnegan's Garage, the ultimate barn find, a 1963 Chevrolet Corvette split window that hasn't seen sunlight in over 20 years. You wonder what the turbo engine was going in? This is it, my new drag and drive project. Yo, welcome back to Finnegan's Garage. Thank you for hanging out, I appreciate you. Especially those of you that went to fsmgarage.com and bought the merch because every dollar you spend there goes right back into the crankcase of Blast Me and all the other things that we have here that I make bad decisions with, financially speaking. Uh, today we're starting out a little different. I'm walking because one of my neighbors is clearing out his garage. So we've all got bucket list cars, right? Stuff that someday we'd like to drive, ride in, experience, whatever it is. Everybody's got that, whether they want to admit it or not. I've been pretty vocal about what my bucket list is. Um, and I've been fortunate enough to build some of the cars on that list. But there are several that, you know, may or may not ever happen for a lot of reasons. Um, Mark IV Supra, been in love with that car ever since I saw the first Fast and the Furious movie in, what was that, 02? uh in the theater and uh yeah that that movie that car made me fall in love with mark IV super body shaped and uh two jay-z motors ball bearing turbos direct port nitrous injection all that cool stuff and so that's on the list um a c2 corvette is on the list but specifically not a stock or restored one i want a c2 corvette with a tube chassis and radial tires and a power adder and the kind of thing I can go race Hot Rod Drag Week with while you know, having one of the coolest looking cars I've ever seen. Um, there's several people that are doing that already and I just love the way those cars look. And uh, last year I bought a project that was unassembled. We shot a couple of roadkill episodes, putting it together and Newber and I road tripped to Vegas and it was super cool. And I thought that was the car. I thought that's the one I'm gonna build for drag week. But it's together, it's really pretty good. And I don't have the heart to cut it up because my intention is to put a tube chassis under one of these things. And why am I you know, doing that with a C2 Corvette that's already together? That's a great question. To compete at some of these drag and drive events, you have to start out with a real car. It has to have a VIN number. It has to be licensed and insured. You know, there's ways around that with aftermarket body parts and things, but I don't really want to be that guy. So I need to start out with a real car. And, uh, you know, after getting my 66 home, I just decided, I don't know that I want to cut it up. It's too complete. However, I'm about to go into a garage that has not one, but two of them in there. And the second one might be the perfect start of this project. I don't know. Let's go find out. I don't see him, but his door's open. Okay, so look, front clip for a C2. Oh, there's a C2, there's a C2 for Shin Camaro. And this people is one of the greatest C2s ever. That is a small tire three-quarter tube chassis, split window, 63 Corvette, oh, with a blown LS in it, Whipple supercharger. Look, there's an LT4. Oh, side pipes. That right there, in my opinion, is like one of the greatest C2s ever built. Um, and I don't know that it's for sale, but I can't afford it either way. That's a quarter of a million dollar car right there. But this one is just a body. And if you're into C2s and you pay real close attention, you'll spot that front end has gills. And the back end has a split window. So 63 only wrong front clip and that's what this front clip is for back here yeah see that's a brand new front clip and uh i believe jerry has like the headlight buckets the motors everything to put that thing together 
this is the one I'm after because it's not a complete car. I can build my own chassis under it, but it has a title and a VIN number. Oh man, this thing's cool. Needs some work, but all of this stuff is readily available. And my dream is a six second capable street strip C2 Corvette. I just got to work out a deal with Jerry to see if I can buy this thing. Okay, it looks like Jerry and I have come to an agreement for the car. Tell me, I know the front clip is different than the back, but tell me about it. I think the... this is a 65 front clip. Okay. But I, I did order and bought a 63 front clip. Yep. And I did order and bought all of the headlight stuff right. for the car. Uh, everything else on the car is pretty much there. Um, What's the history of this car? What do you know about it? All I know is is that I, I found it in Kennesaw. Uh, it was in a basement for 19 years. Okay. That's what I was told. But okay. uh, I can't verify that. But by the condition of the car, I can tell it has not set outside. Okay. So it has to be have been in that basement. Okay. And I've owned it for a while. Uh, I, I actually stumbled across it when I found it. Um, and I kind of had to have it as soon as I, I seen it. Right. But the guy wouldn't sell it to me. Oh. And uh, I ended up, he was a friend of mine, and I ended up, you know, talking him into selling the car to me. I paid dearly for it. Uh, but you got to remember, it's a 63 split when the original with a title. And I do not know where you could actually find another. And yeah, I'm sure they are. That's important but, for me is is, um, is it having a title so I can register it. Yeah. And, you know, it's it's already been cut up in the front. It's got the wrong front end on. And and uh, I think they they bumped it in the front and messed the front end up. And I think what they done was they got a little on the cheap side. Okay. And they got this front end and put it on there. Right. I wish they hadn't, but then again, we can straighten it out. Yeah, know? I'll end up cutting this off and using your new front clip, and I'll make it pin on. That way I can take it on and off to get to the motor. Because Oh, and you know something else? Uh, these little push-button things, I got those. You know, instead of oh, yeah? these fasteners, I got five or six of them. Oh, those new ones where you yeah. don't need a tool. You just push well, the button. Well, I, I got them from my hood, too. But oh, yeah, I ordered yeah. too many. Oh, okay. Okay, so I do have those, and if you want to use those. So yeah, really, it's, instead of a really Zeus fastener, it's this, right? Yes. Yeah, uh, Little tiny hood pins. Uh, let me, let's see. Yeah, it goes on that right there. That's where it, that's part of it. Yeah, and I have that piece, too. Nice. But I also have a cup that's supposed to go around them if you need them, and I have those, too. Oh, cool. Um, and for the people at home, uh, the next... The next part of the video we're going to make is I'm going to help Jerry move his stuff out so we can get access to this um, yeah. probably on Monday, I'm guessing. And Jerry, you're selling this Camaro, right? Right. Um, 69, I'm selling this all new. The whole body is brand new. Uh, dash, everything. And I've got several, several parts. I got brand new uh, black and white uh, houndstooth interior for it. And, okay. Um, it's got uh, Detroit speed suspension, front and rear, subframe connectors, a lot, lot of uh, good parts. It's, it's an RS car. Um, Ooh, rally sport. All right. Yeah. Um, if you wanted to end up with a high dollar car, that'd be a perfect place to start. Right. So you guys at home, when this video comes out, if you are interested in Jerry's Camaro, um, you know, message me and I'll figure out a way to put you in touch with Jerry. And, uh, because that's a pretty sweet car. It really is. Yeah, it is. All right. Well, I will uh, come back with money and a way to transport this. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, leaving my neighbor's house. We have a deal. One minor snag. Um, he bought an aftermarket chassis for that Corvette. And uh, he hasn't picked it up. It hasn't been delivered. He's hoping he can call the builder and say, hey, have you got another customer for that chassis because I'm selling the car and the new guy doesn't want it. Um, 
not that it's not a nice chassis, it's just it's not what I need to do what I want to do at Drag Week. So if he can offload the chassis, we have a handshake deal. And on Monday, I'll go there with the ramp truck, help him move all his stuff out and uh, and pick up that 63 slash 65 Corvette body. Ooh, wish me luck. OK, uh, big update. We're back. It's been several months. Jerry called me. He sold the Pro Touring chassis for the 63 Chevy Corvette split window that I'm going to buy from him. And today is the day we're going to dig it out of his basement. It has been here for several years. Prior to it being in this basement, it was in another basement for 19 years. So pretty much we're about to drag a split window Corvette into the sunlight after a long, long hibernation. And uh, I'm excited. I'm really excited. All right. But first, we got to move a first gen Camaro. So, for you guys at home, um, this first gen 69 Camaro is for sale. That other 63 split window, the really nice silver one, that is not for sale. Don't get excited about that one. You can't have that. But this one, Jerry will sell you. So, if for some reason you want a brand new body Detroit Speed suspension car, uh, send me a message. I'll put you in contact with them. I don't know what it'll cost, but it's really nice. There's not a lick of rust on this thing anywhere. I'm taking it down here to the body shop. This one's going to the body shop? Sunday. Oh, nice. All right, so the price on this one's going to go up a lot because it sounds like Jerry's dropping it off at a body shop to get painted. So when you bought this, it was in a basement on this dolly. And this car was originally white with a black interior. And the reason I'm interested in this is this is a future Drag Week project. I want to get in the 200 mile an hour club at Drag Week on small tires. I have the turbo motor out of Game Over sitting in the garage. That's what's going in this. So. After all these months of you guys wondering, is it going in the caddy? Is it going in blasphemy? No, it's going in this. Um, and so we're going to drag it out of here today. One of the first things that will happen is the nose is going to get cut off this car because I bought the body and the interior and I bought another nose from Jerry, a correct 63 nose. And um, that nose will probably go race car style pin on. We'll have the flip up headlights, but we'll probably pin the hood, the, the nose on so that it can come on and off the car and uh, get worked on easily because it's going to be a lot of real estate is going to get eaten up with that Hemi in here and those turbos and it'll be a lot easier to work on if this can be removed. I also have the original pieces that you know on the side there that you can oh yeah I'd love to put those do, back on you know what I mean? yeah so, and just cut them at the seams so uh, that they're still original pieces I mean it's still worth a lot of money you know but it's up to you on that okay but uh I'm so excited let's uh can we move the dump truck and we'll drag this out into the daylight and then open the doors and walk around and look at it? Okay. We're good. I'll steer the front. <laughs> oh my gosh, this is so cool. This is Steve's so. Sunlight, baby. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> I ought to look at your cage because I'm wondering if we could put the stock tank back in here and use that for the street drive. Um, yeah, you can. That's the way that one is. That one's got the stock tank in it. No, it, it's been cut. No, but uh, it's 16 gallon. Oh, but it's a stock style tank. Yeah. I'm trying to make it like as little conversion as possible. And, and I, I would love to not run wheelie bars. Oh man, here we go. Here we go. Let's hope the strap never breaks. Okay, uh, back up just a little more. Keep going, keep going, a little more. All right. Okay, Corvette's out of the garage. We're now gonna drag it um, just two blocks to my house. Who knew? It's been in a basement all this time. I've been searching for one of these for years. It was in the basement down the street. I was gonna push it home, but uh, 
it's so sketchy on the casters that I kind of need to drag it and direct it. Okay, uh, let's try. I think so. All right. Yeah, go for it. There we go. see here just a 63 Chevy Corvette split window going down the road behind my mule <laughs> oh what a day what a life what a, what a world and yeah I know the front fenders are wrong but the back end of this car is so right oh man no, we don't have a chassis, we have a wooden doll, casters. It's working though. My buddy Dave Williams over here helping. This guy I just met, I don't know his name yet, but he's a huge help. corner of my house. Mm, coming in hot. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> there we go. Coming in really hot. <laughs> Come on, baby. We are almost there. We are almost there. It's, a, it's official. We made it. Whew. Here's our problem. The legs of the engine hoist are not gonna clear our dolly, which is holding our body. So, I mean, we could be real cheap and just put the dolly on top of the legs. A little floor jack action? Yeah, and just yeah. slide it. Sure. Then we don't gotta disassemble anything. Well, no, oh, we're gonna need to come. Oh, wow, that's... Hey, can you kick it right? The motor? Yeah, uh, the hoist. All right. Uh, Ready to wax more? 
We're gonna need to go like. Just, I'm gonna need to pull the leg to. Oh yeah, the grab the leg and pull it that way. Yeah. This feels so sketchy. Oh, uh, that's because it is. I know. <laughs> Remember, kids, you have to die of something. Nobody lives forever. Nope. Question is, will we're it... running into the dolly, I think, again with the legs. That's okay, right. I think we, I think we're close enough where we can just drag it. The dolly or the motor or the or the motor. I think if you push the motor, we could probably get it past here while I let it down. Ooh, there's a little bit of water in there, so that's spicy. Wait, water. Okay, here we go. Coming down. Watch the damper and the mandrel and yep. all that really expensive stuff. This is exactly how you install a Hemi in a C2, kids. You just drop it right on the core support. If you have a ratchet strap, I might be able to like pull it over. Oh wait, I do. That was better. Alright. Okay. okay. It's not quite touching the inner fender on this side. We got a lot of room on my side. Yeah, I know. I want to come over to you. Okay. But, uh, but I can't for one reason. Or another. Oh, the dolly. I can see it. Yeah. Right in the corner of the dolly back here. I'm going to jack. I'm going to let this down. And then I'm going to jack it up at a different place. All right. Now it can come. Okay. That's better. That's better. That's close enough for chassis work or something. <laughs> That's awesome. I probably should have pulled the master cylinder off the firewall, but I think it's going to clear that. It might not clear the steering column, but once we get down to that point, we could probably shove it your way to get past it. Yeah. Let's uh, some aluminum up front. Let's lower it down some more. Definitely, it's definitely too low. Um, All right, let's go up just a scope. Right now. The uh, steering. Are we good on the steering? No, nah, we need to pull the steering column out. Okay. Because uh, the only way to get the motor back to where it needs to go is to get rid of the steering and the brake master cylinder. So. Which we should do because it's rubbing on the valve cover anyway. Oh, dang it. Trying to get the steering column out, and uh, while I was holding the steering wheel, David was trying to smack off the rag gun, and um, yeah. All right, so this is the factory steering column, and oddly enough, it's red and black, but it looks like it was red then painted black. The tub is red. The body tags, this says this was a white car with black interior, but we keep seeing red. I'm not sure why that is. 
I would love to track down whoever used to own this. You know, why does it have the wrong nose on it? Why are there red parts? In the grand scheme of things, none of it matters. I'm just curious. <laughs> I'm just really curious about it. We won't be reusing the steering column. I would like to keep the wheel in the car. Mm. The wheel's awesome. So we have wood under the dolly to clear the arm of the hoist and our engine location. Dry sump pump is just about even with the wood, which is even with the bottom of the rocker. I think that's about where this thing's going to end up, except it's going to go backwards a whole bunch. In fact, we can go backwards now some because we're going to end up cutting the firewall out of this thing putting a mid plate in here, which is going to be tied into the roll cage. So this motor is going to go backwards, but in general, that's about as low as the motor can go. And if you look, the valve cover will be under the hood, but that intake will never ever fit under the hood. And right now we have a lot of real estate between here and here, which is good. And it still can go back like another four or five inches. We can put a radiator from here to here, like all the radiator will fit in this thing. Yeah. No intercooler. Nope. And put dry sump oil tank here, fuel tank there. Turbos will fit nice up and underneath here out of the elements. Yeah, I did. I didn't even look. Is there room for that stuff? Oh, yeah. You, could fit, <laughs> you want me to grab one and hold it up under there? Um, I mean, there's no reason not to. Yeah. That's a lot of motor in a little Corvette. So these are Nelson Racing mirror image turbos for the Caddy. Oh, sure. not V-Bend, I forgot. Definitely not. T6 flanges. Oh, yeah. Big dogs. Yeah. Oh, Look at those pretty 11 blade. Ooh. Wuhan war whistles. Indeed. Well, don't let him hear you say that. <laughs> Just kidding, Tom. <laughs> uh, not made in China. Definitely not. Well, well but our, our plan is... And this car, you know, won't have these stock inner fenders, but the turbos are going to end up right over there. Oh. Ah, don't scratch the pretty... Uh, I don't want to. Yeah, 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 no. The next thing, I think, after you recover from the hernia, the next thing will be <laughs> cutting this nose off this car, which will enable us to get a better look at other things, and then fitting the new nose on the car. And then uh, this whole thing and the parts I've collected will go to another shop so that they can build the tube chassis because I am not a chassis builder, nor do I have a chassis table. And even though in my heart of hearts, I want to learn how to do that. I also want to drive this car this century. So, yeah. yeah. It's fun to see it in there though. That is rad. And if I trusted my Harbor Freight uh, hydraulic cylinder over there a little more, I'd leave it in here overnight, but I don't, so. Back out it comes. Back out we go. <laughs> And then we'll see you next time on Finnegan's Ground.